Hey, welcome back. So we're going to talk about the Laplace transform, and we use this thing to solve um, the linear differential equations with constant coefficients. And uh, we won't be able to even begin that process until 7.2. Um, in the beginning here, we just need to get more comfortable with this thing. Okay, this thing is the Laplace transform. So let's look at it. Okay. So first we have a definition. Um, the Laplace transform of a function f of t is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times f of t uh, dt. Okay. The output of this thing is just going to be some function in terms of s. And uh, be a little bit careful with the notation here. So big F of S is just the Laplace transform of a little function uh, F. Okay, so what did I just say? So if you have the Laplace of G of T, the book will write that. If they don't feel like doing the integral, they'll write it big G of S. Okay, so when you do these Laplace transforms, you'll end up with a function in terms of S. Okay. And they'll give it a big G or, you know, if it's, okay. All right, um, so let's look at this thing. Like I said, we're going to have to play around with this guy before we can even get to solving differential equations. Um, we won't be able to do that until 7.2. Okay, so just here, first off, we want to see how this thing works. Um, and we're, uh, right now, we're working with the definition. Okay. Eventually, you'll have to have these memorized, but uh, right now, use the definition. You kind of have to know how they work, because if you do come across the Laplace transform of something you're, you're maybe not necessarily knowledgeable about, you can always kick back to the definition and just do it brute force. Okay, okay so anyways, working with the definition first. Um, Example one, we want to know the Laplace transform of the number one. Okay. Okay. So what you do is just dump it into that definition above this thing right here. And um, yeah, it's it's an improper integral. So you're gonna uh, traditionally you use a limit. Uh, that's the way we taught it in Calc two. So let me show you um, the Laplace transform of the number one is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times 1 dt. All right, so there's there's a 1 in there. We're not going to write it. Um, then I have to integrate this thing, right? So I turn it into a limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to b of e to the negative st dt. Okay, it's a little annoying with all the variables floating around, but right now s is considered a constant and t is the variable. So I'm going to need to do a u sub on this. Um, hopefully, you know, um, maybe you've gotten to the point where you could just kind of look at it and know what that integral is. Um, the the u sub, if you wanted to do it that way, so let me do the u sub way. U is negative st, du is negative s dt, and so dt will be negative du over s. Right. So I get the limit of the integral of uh, e to the u times negative du over s. And then you can factor out the negative 1 over s. So you get the limit of negative 1 over s integral then of e to the u du. Of course, that's easy. That's just the limit of negative 1 over s times e to the u. Um, we have to evaluate back subbing in the u part. So we have the limit of negative 1 over s e to the negative st. And now we can kind of put everything back together. So we're going from 0 to b, and b is going to infinity. Okay. All right. So um, with this limit thing, there there is some peculiarity to it. Like, uh, uh, let's just kind of... Uh, think about this limit. I'll write it in a different color. So the limit as, uh, and I guess I need to evaluate it first, so sorry. Let me evaluate it and then we'll talk about the limit. So this will be the limit as b goes to infinity. Plugging b in wherever I see t, I'll have negative 1 over s e to the negative uh, b s um, minus 
negative, so that would be plus 1 all over s e to the 0 times s, which will be 0, e to the 0 is just 1. Okay, So I need to take the limit of this thing. And uh, this is where it becomes a little weird, but you just kind of go with it. Um, let me put it in a different color. This limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 over s e to the negative bs. So what I'm going to do is rewrite the e to the negative bs as, uh, you know, put it into the denominator and change the sign of the exponent. So it would be negative 1 all over s e to the bs. Okay. So the, the peculiarity is that I'm going to pretend that the s is positive at this point. So if it was negative, it would pop back up to the numerator and uh, it would go off to infinity. So we want to find basically where this thing converges. So if you presume that S is positive now and you're putting in B values like 10, 100, 1,000, a million, this denominator is going to go to infinity. So you'll have some form L over infinity which always just goes to zero because the denominator is going to get really really huge okay so ultimately this thing will go to zero but there was kind of a presumption right I presume that Z S needed to be greater than zero okay um, and that generally is an implicit assumption you'll see it written in the book um, after every uh, like in your homework for 7.1, they'll kind of put it in parentheses. You're not expected to figure that out, but uh, it's always lurking, okay? And it makes these things kind of a little bit unwieldy to work with, but um, <laughs> that's the idea, okay? So that first part of the integral is going to go to, of course, zero. The second part of the integral is just considered constant, so the limit of that limit of a constant is just the constant. So what we end up with is 1 over s. And again, there was that tacit assumption that s is greater than zero. Okay. All right. Um, one note that now they make in the book is that we're going to use shorthand notation for these uh, infinite integrals. Instead of using the limit symbol, we're just going to embed the infinity into uh, this bracket in the bracket notation. So you'll see that in my next, next example. I'm going to kind of not bother with the limit notation anymore. Okay. Okay. So example two, we want to find the Laplace transform of t, the function t. Okay. So the definition, we're just plopping that into our integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative st times t dt. Okay. Um, Unfortunately, here you have to do it by parts, right? So, uh, and again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna use that limit notation. You'll see kind of what I do instead. Uh, but um, I need to do it by parts on this thing. So, uh, the the trig, the, the, sorry, the algebra comes before exponentials. So u is t, and dv is e to the negative st dt. Um, integrating e to the negative st with respect to t, you'll get e to the negative st divided by negative at s. So I'll put the negative out in front and I'll just divide by regular s. Okay. If you did a u sub, you would get a negative 1 over s and then e to the u, integral v to the u is just e to the u. Okay. du will just be dt. Okay. So I have all my by parts information I need. So I'll rewrite this, um, that times that, so negative t e to the negative s t all over s, and I need to remind myself to evaluate. Um, and again, I don't use the limit notation. I'm just going to put the infinity symbol into the onto the upper bracket. Okay, that'll remind me this thing has to go to let let it go to infinity. Um, then I'm going to go. Uh, um, so what do I do now? Minus this times this, so it'll be plus, and I can factor out the 1 over s, and then I have the integral of e to the negative st d dt. Um, this will turn in the negative t e to the negative st all over s. Um, if you do a u sub on this, you'd get a negative 1 over s, so it's going to become minus 1 over s squared um, times e to the negative st. 
and then I want to evaluate from zero to infinity. Okay. okay. So if you put, if you, if you let, if you kind of, uh, okay. So that first one, letting it go to infinity. So technically, if I used all my limit notation, you know, it would be the limit of uh, plugging in b. So b goes to infinity of uh, negative b e to the negative b s all over s and then minus but it become plus because there's a negative there with zero in for t right so that just be as big zero for the second part of it um, the limit of that thing then and then supposing again that that the uh, b or rather the s is positive greater than zero limit as b goes to infinity i could rewrite that as negative b all over s e to the b s okay um, this is infinity actually negative infinity over infinity right assuming b is positive or so, sorry assuming s is positive so negative infinity over infinity that's l'hopital so you do limit as b goes to infinity of uh, negative 1 all over e to the bs times s times another s, so that would be s squared. And clearly as b goes to infinity, that denominator now is going to go to uh, infinity, and you have l over infinity, which is 0. Okay, so that first term is just going to be a big 0. Okay. The second term, if you put an infinity into the exponent for that negative t, t part, it's going to drop it down. So you're putting like 10, 100, 1,000, a million in there. It's going to drop it to the denominator and explode, and it will become 0. Okay, So um, you know that first thing is 0. And then you have minus 1 all over s squared e to the negative, I guess, infinity s if you want. And then minus negative, but it become plus then, 1 all over s squared e to the negative s times 0, which is just 1. Okay, so again, um, this part right here will make the exponential go to the denominator. And you could think of it as uh, negative 1 all over s squared e to the infinity s, which just means that whole denominator is going to go to infinity. So that first term will just be 0, and you'll just get 1 over s. Okay. Um, example 3, we start working with uh, exponentials. So part A, they want the Laplace of e to the negative 3t. So that'll be the integral of e to the negative st times e to the negative 3t dt from 0 to infinity. Um, you could rewrite that as e to the uh, negative s plus 3t, right? Because this thing is going to be e to the negative st minus 3t. And then you could factor a negative out the front. So you get negative st plus 3t. And then you could factor a t out the back. So you get e to the negative um, s plus 3 and then the t is in the back there. Okay. Um, then you could just do a u sub on the, the exponent. So you'd get negative s plus 3t, and then du would be negative s plus 3dt. So dt would be negative du all over s plus 3, right? Um, ultimately, that just means you have a negative 1 all over s plus 3. Um, factor that you need to factor out. And then you'd have e to the negative s plus 3t evaluated from 0 to infinity. Uh, plugging in infinity, the, the, part, the first part with the exponential again, this part here, when you plug in infinity here, that's going to go to the denominator and explode. So that first part will just be 0. And then minus a negative 1 all over s plus 3. Um, e to the negative s plus 3 times 0, which would be 0. So, you, so believe it or not, you're just going to end up with um, this 1 over s plus 3. Okay. Uh, part b, then, the Laplace of e to the 5t, um, 
that will be the integral of e to the negative st times e to the 5 t dt from 0 to infinity. And then, of course, you get e to the um, 5, well, sorry, it's 5 minus st dt, right? And then if you do your u sub, you'll get, uh, um, you know, if you want to write it out, if you don't like doing things in your head, I sometimes don't trust my brain anymore. du is um, 5 minus s dt, right? So you're going to have this factor of 1 over 5 minus s, and then integral of e to the u, and then the integral of e to the u would just be e to the u. And back subbing, you get e to the 5 minus st, and we need to evaluate from 0 to infinity. Um, here, again, you kind of have to pretend that the uh, negative st part is going to make it go to uh, 0. So maybe it's not so clear here. Um, but so, so let me take it apart again and kind of do it in a different color. So we would normally have the uh, limit as b goes to infinity of, in this case, 1 all over 5 minus s times um, e to the 5 minus s times b minus e to the 0. Okay. Um, that's what I would normally get. Uh, then I would go limit as b goes to infinity of 1 all over 5 minus s times e to the um, 5 minus s times b minus 1. Okay. Uh, putting the infinity into here. Um, I mean, you could kind of think of this exponent here, you, you want to make it so it's going to be, uh, so that part is 0. So if you take this and say, hey, let's make 5 minus s less than 0, in other words, s greater than 5, in that case, this part will go to 0 because that exponent is going to be negative times b, something negative times b. And uh, a negative, you know, b that's going to drop it into the denominator, and it'll explode to infinity. So you have l over infinity, which will be zero, right? And you just end up with that first part going away, and then you have negative one all over five minus s, right? So um, again, you you kind of make that tacit assumption. So for the previous problem. The tacit assumption was that here the s plus 3, or you know, we had this negative in there as well. So I guess we could say negative s minus 3 is uh, less than 0. In other words, s would have been greater than um, uh, negative 3. Okay. And when you look to the right here, you can kind of see that observation being pushed um, right here. S is negative, greater than negative 3. In this problem, to make that limit work, you've presumed that S is greater than 5. Okay. So you'll always make the assumption that pushes that exponential part to 0. Okay. And you don't need to declare it, but uh, yeah, it's always there. The way they're going to re rewrite this is, you know, bring the negative to the denominator, and then you have 1 all over s minus 5 okay, for the transform. Okay, um, they just kind of, then when you're dealing with trig functions, they get worse because a lot of the... Uh, Laplace transforms of trig functions are going to be these uh, forms that you have to do by parts on. Um, and then it's one of those ones where you kind of have to set it equal to i and then combine like terms and divide out, right? So example four is going to be of that flavor. And then ultimately the Laplace of that is 2 over s squared plus 4. I'm going to show you an example of that in the homework. Um, the linearity principle just means we can, once you know kind of the Laplace transform of particular functions, you can just cut to the chase. Um, so for example, 5, 
Uh, note above, we already have kind of the Laplace transform of 1 and t, right? So the Laplace transform of 1, if we scroll back up, um, that was 1 over s, right? Laplace transform of t is, uh, shouldn't be 1 over s, it should be 1 over s squared. LS is 2 there somewhere. Sorry about that. So the Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s. Laplace transform of t is 1 over s squared. So the Laplace transform of 1 plus 5t, um, you can work the Laplace transform just like the uh, derivatives back in the annihilators. They're linear. Okay, so this is the same as the Laplace of 1 plus the Laplace of 5t. You can factor constants out of those. So this would be the Laplace of 1 plus 5 Laplace of t. And then uh, Laplace of 1 we know is 1 over s. The Laplace of t is 1 over s squared. Okay. Um, right. So eventually you'll, you'll have these basic forms. The denominator is always the annihilator of the function. Okay, so um, I guess section three in my notes, uh, basic forms that you need memorized. So I would make uh, cards, uh, flash cards based off of theorem 7.1.1 there. Um, so A, well, a plus of one. Um, so what I said was to think of this the denominators in terms of annihilators. So the annihilator of 1 would be d, right? So you just, instead of writing d, you write s. Um, Laplace of t to the n. So the Laplace, the, the, the annihilator of t to the n is d to the n plus 1. So the denominator will be t to the n plus 1. The numerator, you're kind of on your own. It doesn't quite work out perfectly, but it's n factorial. Um, Laplace of e to the at. So uh, the, anni the annihilator would be d minus a, right? So it's just s minus a, and then you can just put a 1 in the numerator. Part d, Laplace of sine of kt. So the annihilator of sine kt would be s squared plus k squared. In the numerator, you just put k, so you're on your own with the numerators. Um, the Laplace of cosine of kt um, is going, the denominator, again, the same annihilator, s squared plus, it would be d squared plus k squared, right? In the numerator, you're just going to put uh, s. Whoops. So you need these definitely memorized. Memorize these. Um, as far as the cinch ones, they come up in the homework, but I'm not going to beat you up over them. I, don't, I just don't ever use them. Um, the last section here is just talking about exponential order and uh, the criteria for you actually being able to do a Laplace transform. Um, basically, the exponential order just says that whatever function you're doing Laplace transform of, it can't grow too fast. Okay. It needs to be bounded above by some factor of an exponential. Now, it's kind of what you see in figure 7.1.3. That blue curve is the function you want to take the Laplace transform of. So long as it's uh, eventually always under an exponential, like you can see that the kind of pink curve is above the blue curve in all three of these examples. So long as that happens forever, eventually, then the function is potentially Laplace transferable. Um, the only other issue is it needs to have some sort of continuity. Um, 7.1.2 advises piecewise continuity on the, on the interval. So piecewise continuity means it can only have finitely many discontinuities. And then they start looking at these uh, Laplace transforms of continuous functions, which is where most of the homework will reside. Okay, so let's uh, cross over then into the homework and sort of take a look at that. So, um, homework. Uh, so oddly enough, in the homework, they, they kind of really uh, get carried away with these piecewise functions, which is not really 
I mean, they'll, they'll come up later, but it's just odd, I think, for some reason, to harp on it so badly here. But, oh well, I'm not, what do I know? Um, so, so let's dive in here, all right? So it's not exactly like these examples we've been doing is kind of what I want to say. All right. These Laplace transforms are, are a little bit different than what you're going to see right here now in the homework because the, the functions involved are going to be piecewise. Okay, so f of t um, here is negative 1, 1, and uh, it's negative 1 for 0, less than t, less than 1, and then 1 for t greater than or equal to 1, right? Okay, so uh, Laplace of this guy is going to be uh, the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the negative st times negative 1 dt and then plus the integral from 0 to infinity uh, sorry 1 to infinity uh, 1 to infinity of e to the negative st and then you put in the other function it's just 1 right so for the first interval you're plugging in that and then the second interval you, you have to plug in this and I mean, it is just the definition of the integral e to the negative st times f of t dt from 0 to infinity. It's just, you know, it has two different pieces there. So for the first, in the first interval from 0 to 1, you have to plug in the negative 1. And then in the second interval from 1 to infinity, you have to plug in the 1. Okay. And, and this is, would be one of the kind of transforms you wouldn't have memorized. Okay. So... I, I think that maybe that's why they're putting them in the, so many in the homework. It's just you, you need to use the definition in order to do these particular problems. You're not going to be able to get away with just memorizing on these. Okay, I think that's the reason why he's doing it. Who knows, though. Uh, so anyways, let's take a look at the, each of these. So the first one, um, I, I get a negative e to the negative st, and then... Uh, a u sub would give me a, a one negative one over s, but there's already a negative one there, so it become one over s. You need to evaluate from zero to one, and then this other guy um, would be e to the negative s t all over uh, s again, but there would be a negative from the u sub, right? Because the u sub again is for negative st. So du would be negative s dt and you would get a negative 1 over s at, uh, floating around. Right? So it'd be negative 1 over s integral of u to u but the integral of u to u is just e to u and then back subbing you get e to the negative st and then the negative 1 over s times it but a negative 1 already sitting there I make it positive. The second integral e to the negative st times negative 1 over s Okay, um, this looks like zero, right? Uh, if, if we were to rewrite this thing, um, well, it's not. I know it's not zero. I got the answer sitting right there. The problem is the second integral is going from one to infinity. Okay, so that does. It's, you just can't subtract them like blindly. They have different limits. Um, right. So the first guy plugging in one, I get e to the negative s over s, and then minus plug in zero, I get e to the zero which is 1 all over s. Okay, and then minus, if I plug in infinity, um, what do I get? Well, I get uh, 1, it'll be negative s times infinity. That will assume s is greater than 0. It'll bring that to the denominator. It'll go to 0. So it'll be 0, and then minus e to the negative s over s. Okay, um, then you can distribute the negative. You're going to get e to the negative s over s minus 1 over s plus e to the negative s over s, and that'll be 2e to the negative s all over s minus 1 over s. And you can see they, they give you the little um, s has to be greater than 0. Okay, let's look at this. Um, seven point so this one is more of the same you just have to splice it um, let's see if any of these are all that 
challenging uh, sure let's do number four um, so the function is given with a graph this time right so f of t equals zero from uh, zero to one and then it looks like it's just going to be t from one to infinity right? Okay, so the Laplace of that thing, of course, by definition, I'll just write out the definition, e to the negative st, f of t, dt. So you have two different functions here. So I'm going to split the integral at that point one. Okay, I get that from this. So first plugging in zero, it'll just be the integral of e to the negative s times zero, which is zero dt from 0 to 1 and then plus the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative st times t dt. Okay. okay so that first integral the integral of 0 is just a constant um, plus the integral of e to oops I gotta do a little bit by parts on that guy so I'll say u is t and then dv is e to the negative st. So du will be dt, and v will be negative e to the negative st all over s. Okay, so my uh, stuff is this times this. So what do I have? Uh, negative t e to the negative st all over s. Let me just write that as a minus. Right, minus, uh, minus the integral of that product, v times du, which will become plus. I can factor out 1 over s. And I, integral of e to negative st. I can remind myself to evaluate these things. Um, so the first guy, the first, the constant evaluated at 1 is just c. Because, I mean, the, what is the function? The function here is c. Right, so if you plug in 1, you, f of 1 is just c. f of 0 is just c. So you get c minus c, which of course is going to be 0. Um, the next part then, uh, minus, so if you plug infinity, it's it's going to have a lot of towels on it. So that t e to the negative s t over s, we, believe it or not, we've kind of already beat that one to death. It's right here. Okay. Um, basically, you would just rewrite it and then do L'Hopital's and it would be zero. Okay, so that part's going to be zero. Um, zero. And then minus plugging in one, I get e to the negative s over s plus one over s times e to the negative s t. And there would be a u sub and you would have a, a one over s, negative one over s evaluate from 1 to infinity. So I'm getting e to the negative s over s um, minus e to the negative st all over s squared from uh, 1 to infinity. Plugging in infinity for t, that thing would go, that part would go to 0. So you get e to the negative s over s uh, minus 0 minus Plugging in 1, you get e to the negative s all over s squared. And then that ended up being e to the negative s over s plus e to the negative s over s squared. Okay, grand. Um, these are just more that 5 and 6 are the same problem. It doesn't look like it, but they are. Number 7. Um, we could take a look at that one. That was a little weird. Oh, number eight is the is the nightmare scenario. Oh, maybe it's number nine. That's the nightmare. One of them is a real nightmare. Yeah, what's happening in the exercises? Is they're getting harder and harder, and then eventually they'll they'll be like, well, just use theorem seven point one point one, which has you memorize all of the transforms. Have you so, so you're going to be forced to kind of use the um, definition to a certain point, and then you're uh, 
you're, you're just going to not be able to use it anymore because the problems will get so out of hand. Okay, so let's try, um, I don't want to do anything too easy. Uh, so for number seven, I just want to mention that you're kind of having to do uh, a little bit of cleverness with the exponential. Um, so here, there's the Laplace transform of the thing. It's no longer a piecewise issue. So you're going to end up with the integral of e to the rewrite this, right? So it's negative st plus t plus 5 as your exponent. And then if you did a u sub on that, t plus t plus 5, the uh, constant that would come out would be uh, negative s plus 1. Okay, so this would equal 1 all over, I guess, 1 minus s uh, e to the negative st plus t plus 5 integrated from 0 to infinity, right? Um, rewriting that then, you could have 1 all over 1 minus s e to the 5 times e to the um, negative s plus 1 t, okay? Um, and then uh, minus 1 all over and of course, we're, we're going to put infinity in for t, so I might as well just kind of put it in there and presume that negative s plus 1 is negative, right? So in other words, s is greater than 1. Um, right, so the, the second term would be 1 over 1 minus s times e to the 0 plus 5, which would be e to the fifth. Um, this portion then would go would go to the denominator and explode to infinity, causing the whole first portion to go to zero, right? So that second term then would just be negative one all over one minus s e to the fifth, and that's your solution. Okay. Um, they, they start getting more and more annoying now. Uh, you, again, there, there's no way to get around not using the definition, um, like just having those memorized transforms still. Let, let's try uh, number 9 is uh, annoying and number 10 is just equally annoying. Um, number 9 is not as bad. Uh, 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times e to the negative t sine t dt. Okay, so let's zoom in on that. I'm going to need a little bit of room. All right, so first I'm going to rewrite that e to the negative st times e to the negative t as e to the, uh, I'm going to factor out a negative on top of everything else, s plus 1 times t, okay, and then sine of t. I just want to make super sure that's right. So this would be negative st minus t. Factor out the negative, it would be, uh, st plus t and factor the t out the back door. So negative s plus 1 t. Okay, this is a by parts, and not only is it a by parts, but it's one of those loopy ones. Okay, so you're going to have to do by parts uh, twice and then assign the uh, integral to a variable and then solve for the variable. Okay, so if you want to see that, I'm going to let u, so from Lee 8 uh, sine t, and then dv is the exponential part, e to the negative s plus 1 t. So v is e to the negative s plus 1 t divided by negative s plus 1, and then du will be cosine t dt. Okay, so rewriting this times this, so it would be negative e to the negative s plus 1 t sine of t all over, I pulled that negative in front, so just so I could have an s plus 1 in the denominator, and then minus this times this, it'll be plus, I could factor out a 1 over s plus 1, uh, integral e to the negative s plus 1 um, t, cosine t dt. And you see you're no better for all your travels because now you just kind of have the same 
integral issue. So now you do by parts again. So u will be this time cosine t. du will be negative sine t. Just getting that out of the way. dv again is e to the negative s plus 1 times t. And then v is e to the negative s plus 1 t divided by negative s plus 1 again. So um, what would we be getting? Negative e to negative s plus 1 t sine of t all over s plus 1 plus 1 all over s plus 1 times whatever this thing's going to be. So that's this times this. That would be negative um, e to negative s plus 1 t cosine t all over s plus 1 minus this times this. That times that, they're both negative, so it'd be positive. So I leave the negative alone. So negative uh, integral, um, there's a factor of 1 over s plus 1 again. So let me factor that out first. 1 all over s plus 1. Integral of e to the negative s plus 1 t sine t. I guess I didn't need all that extra room below it. Uh, but what you see is we've gone full circle, right? So what I'm going to do is call this integral here i, right? And set it equal to this, which I'll also call i. So I'll have i equals negative e to the negative um, s plus 1 t all over s plus 1 minus e to the negative s plus 1 t cosine of t all over s plus 1 squared. Um, and then it would be a negative 1 over s plus 1 squared times that integral, i. So uh, be minus 1 all over s plus 1 squared i. Um, move that s plus 1, uh, 1 over s plus 1 squared i to the other side, factor out the i, you'd have 1 plus 1 all over s plus 1 squared, okay. and then that would equal all of this junk right there. Okay. And then I'm going to find a common denominator, I guess, no, no nice way to talk about it. Um, so this would be s plus 1 squared up and top and bottom, it's plus 1 squared. Um, I might as well go ahead and write this all out. I still need to evaluate that thing. Right. Um, but uh, this guy, what will it become? s squared plus 2s plus 1 all over s plus 1 squared plus another 1, right? So what you're going to see then is i equals, multiplying by the reciprocal of this expression, s plus 1 squared all over s squared plus 2s plus 2 times this junk, right? And I'm going to start evaluating. So if I put in a, an infinity on this guy, um, and I think I lost a sine of t somewhere. Yeah, I lost a sine of t there. So sine of t, sorry about that. It's actually going to be 0. And, and you may say, well, why? Well, um, if you have the, so let's just take a look at us at this limit for a second. So I have the limit um, of this thing. I guess we don't even need to write it as a limit, right? We just put that infinity in there. Well, let's write it as a limit. Let's. So the limit as b goes to infinity of um, negative e to the negative s plus one times b times sine of b all over s plus 1. So clearly I can drop down the exponential part and I get sine of b all over negative sine of b all over e to the s plus 1 b and we'll presume then that s plus 1 is greater than 0, right? Times s plus 1 and uh, 
to prove that this thing goes to zero, you can kind of just use the fact that that one all over this would go to zero, right? It, it would be a squeeze theorem issue. Um, if you could show that the limit of that portion is going to go to zero, then the limit of the product will also go to zero. So uh, basically what I would do is kind of wedge this. I have the, the fact that, um, okay, so it's, it's always this fact that the sine of x is in between uh, negative one and one, right? Then I can multiply this expression through by that part that I circled. So I'd have negative 1 all over e to the s plus 1 times b times s plus 1 less than or equal to sine of x all over that same thing e to the s plus 1 times b times uh, s plus 1 and that's less than or equal to 1 all over e to the s plus 1 times b times s plus 1. So the thing is that the the, this part alone and this part alone over here will both go to zero. So that forces the limit of the thing in middle in the middle to go to zero as well. And uh, a negative times something going to zero will still go to zero. So the negative sine b all over e to the sin, s plus one times b times s plus one, this thing will go to the zero by the squeeze theorem mainly. Okay, okay so that first part when I go to infinity is going to go to zero. The second part for the same reasoning is going to go to zero. Okay, you could do a squeeze rule but with cosine in between negative one and one. Then it's just a matter of plugging in the zero, the lower part of the limit, right? So it would be minus whatever because it's always the top minus the bottom when you're evaluating limits and the antiderivatives. So plugging in zero into the bottom would be negative e to the zero times sine of zero. Sine of zero is zero, so that first term is just going to be a big zero. Then minus e to the negative zero, s plus one times zero is zero. So e to the zero is just one, cosine of zero is one, and then all over s plus one squared. Okay. So the uh, integral will end up equaling basically s plus 1 squared all over s squared plus 2s plus 2 times 1 all over s plus 1 squared. You get a nice little cancellation and your answer is 1 all over s squared plus 2s plus 2. Okay, okay. Um, let's make sure that's right. Yeah, okay. Uh, the next guy, oh my gosh, right? Um, this one is a nightmare on steroids, and what I uh, kind of would would um, recommend that you do is kind of identify Laplace transforms, maybe of functions that you already did. Um, but anyways, let's let's take a look, right? So the Laplace of this weird function is going to be the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative st times t cosine of t. So the way I approached it was to do by parts. I don't have a, a by parts for three functions, which is unfortunate because there's really kind of three functions here. So what I just did was let u equal t cosine t and then let dv equal e to the negative st and then uh, flew by the seat of my pants, so to speak. v would be e to the negative st um, all over s, negative s. And then du would be cosine of t minus um, t sine of t. And then use that, and then you have to do that at twice, and then hopefully we can use some of the information above to kind of clean it up. But let's take a look at what we got, right? So I have um, negative e to the negative st times t cosine of t all over s and then minus which will become plus the integral of e to the negative st all over s cosine of t and let's split up this integral dt minus the integral of e to the negative st all over s sine of t dt okay 
So um, the first guy, negative e to negative st, t cosine of t, doesn't seem like that's big of a deal. Got to evaluate it still. These guys, these other guys though, um, if you look close, they're just Laplace transforms of cosine and sine. Okay, so the first one would be e to the negative st cosine t dt, and then minus one all over s integral of e to the negative st sine of t dt. Okay, you uh, the, those are well known already. Um, I, I don't think I did a, did the example, but the, from the book you can get the um, Laplace transforms of those. Maybe I should do them just for the completion, um, but the video has kind of gotten long enough. So I think I just want to rewrite those as Laplace transforms. So this would be um, first zero to infinity on this guy. Um, again, the, the first when I put in infinity, that's going to go to zero. Um, and it's because basically you could just look at this portion and prove that that goes to zero and then do the squeeze theorem on cosine t because cosine t will be in between negative one and one. If I could show that that portion I circled goes to zero it'll and then multiply through by that portion, um, the thing in the middle will also go to zero. And I think we've kind of already proved that e to the negative st times t over s goes to zero with the L'Hopital's rule. Um, so this would be negative e to the negative st times t cosine of t all over s and then less than or equal to uh, e to the negative st t all over s, right? So that thing's going to go to zero and then you'll have minus that thing evaluated at zero which is also zero. Then you're just left with these Laplace transforms, Laplace of cosine of t plus minus 1 over s. So minus 1 over s Laplace of sine of t. Okay, so the Laplace of cosine is always going to be um, s all over s squared plus k squared, where k is whatever the coefficient of t is inside of cosine. In this case, it's just 1. Minus 1 over s times sine, um, its Laplace transform is just k all over s squared plus k squared. Okay, so in this case, it's just 1 over s squared plus 1. Um, I guess we could rewrite this as 1 all over s squared plus 1 minus 1 all over yeah, s times s squared plus 1. And then hopefully that's right. Um, otherwise you're in for quite a, a treat. Okay. Somehow I managed to get it wrong. Let me look back here for a sec. Okay, so I did by parts. Ooh, I lost the T. There was a T there. It's very unfortunate. So I apologize. So that's not going to be so easy. This one has a T in it. Okay. So, um, right. That will screw things up a little bit. Uh, this will be uh, T E to negative S T. Uh, the first two parts are okay though. Right, so the, the zero portion is okay, and then you have plus the one over s times the Laplace of cosine, which is just k or s rather, all over s squared plus um, one, which I already had written. All right, so it's right there. It's zero plus okay, and then it's it's minus this other thing, but this other thing is t sine of t. Okay, all right. So I think I'm gonna have to do another by parts on that portion. Apologize for screwing that up. I feel like such an idiot. I was hoping it would be a lot easier. Uh, so minus anyways one all over s, and then if you do by parts on that again, again I'm going to do the same kind of idea. I'm going to let u be t sine of t, and then um, e to the negative st is dv. So v will be e to the negative st all over um, s negative s. So this will be negative. And then du will be uh, sine of t plus um, t cosine t. Okay. 
and it's going to have one of those loopy effects to it. So multiplying this times this, I get negative t e to the negative s t sine of t all over s, and then minus that times that will become plus, right? Because that that's negative, so plus. Um, I can factor out one over s, and then I have integral of e to the negative s t um, times sine t, which is just the Laplace transform of sine of t, which I already know. And then, uh, then, geez, um, uh, so it would have been minus, but it'll become plus so because of that negative in front, and then. I'm just going to write it as two integrals. So one all over s integral t e to the negative s t cosine t, which is where I started. Okay, so that's what I mean by that loopy effect. All right. So um, this thing where I kind of ended up, this guy right here is actually this guy right here. Okay. So I can assign that an i value and set them equal to each other, add that to the other side. So I have I, and then I gotta figure out what's, what's coming, right? So the first guy is one over S squared plus one, plus T E to the negative S T sine T all over S squared, which is just gonna turn into zero, um, minus one all over S squared times the Laplace of sine of T which I know is just one over s squared plus one, and then uh, minus one all over s squared i. Move that negative one over s squared i to the other side, you get i of uh, one minus one over s squared equals one all over s squared plus one. Uh, this guy again will go to the zero, the squeeze rule. Um, and then I have minus one all over s squared times the Laplace of sine of t, which is one all over s squared plus one. Um, this thingamajig is going to become uh, s squared minus one all over s squared when I find a common denominator. And this will of course be one over s squared plus one. You can get a common denominator here, right? This would be s squared and then uh, just minus one. Um, then you can multiply both sides by reciprocals. So you get i is s squared minus one all over s squared times s squared plus one times s squared all over s squared minus one. And it should, seems like I'm missing something. So it's something idiotic. because it's not one over s squared plus one, you yeah. know. <sighs> Maybe it is. Am I having wishful thinking? No. Uh, no. Did I find a common denominator correctly? <laughs> um, anyways, the s squares are canceling. That part is true. Just seems like I, I should have had like something else. Let me pause the video and find the mistake. Hold on. Oh, I see. It's this is plus right here. So this would be a squared plus one, um, and then all over s squared plus one. So it looks like this is s squared minus one all over s squared plus one squared. And then hopefully that's it. Okay, yeah, so they get really, really annoying, and what it's kind of forcing you to do is, you know what, you better memorize <laughs> those transforms, okay? It's uh, these uh, these guys right here. Okay, so once uh, you, you worked with the definition enough, it, it's okay, just use the, just use the, de the uh, memorized version. But again, you know, it's one of those things, if you ever come across one that you don't know how to do the Laplace transform of, you're gonna have to go back to the definition. Okay. But anyways, just use the uh, memorized forms for the rest of the homework for um, 
what is it, 11 to whatever, 11 to 20. So let's see how that works. Um, sometimes you kind of have to adjust them a little bit so that so you can get the work out. So anyways, number 11. Uh, F of t is 3t to the fifth. So the Laplace of that thing. Again, you can factor out constants. So you get 3 Laplace of t to the fifth. And then, um, well, plus of t to the fifth, it, it, again, I, I kind of think in terms of annihilators. So the denominator is going to be s to the six, and then the numerator, it's going to be five factorial. Okay. Um, five factorial is 120 times three is 360 over s to the six. Okay, so that's just from the memorization of that 7.1. Let's see if there's any. So they're, they're pretty simple um, as long as you get the formulas memorized. So the Laplace of t squared plus 5t minus 2 is the Laplace of t squared plus 5 Laplace t minus Laplace 2 Laplace 1. Um, Laplace t squared, that's going to be 1 all over s cubed in the numerator 2 factorial, which is just 2, plus 5 times uh, 1 over s squared, then 1 factorial on the top, minus 2 times 1 over s, simplify that, 2 over s cubed, plus 5 over s squared, minus 2 over s. Um, there's no mystery or magic to any of these. <laughs> You know, it's, uh, 14, you're going to have to cube that out. Laplace of t plus 1 cubed is t cubed plus 3t squared plus 3t plus 1. All right. Laplace of t cubed is uh, s to the fourth and then a 3 factorial on the top plus 3. Laplace of t squared is s cubed with a 2 up top plus 3 Laplace of t. 1 all over s squared, and the Laplace of 1 is just 1 over s. Clean it up. Um, yeah. Let's skip down. There's a cinch, so just use the formula for the cinch. Um, this one, number 18, I, you have to go back to the definition, right? Because, well, not quite. All right, so this one's tricky. You don't have a definition for e to the t times cosh of t. You just have a cosh. So what you do is kind of remember your calculus training. Cosh is the same as e to the t plus e to the negative t all over 2. And then multiply that out. You get e to the 2t all over 2 plus e to the 0, which is 1, all over 2. And then take the Laplace of that junk. right? So you get e to the 2t all over 2 plus 1 half. Um, so that's going to be uh, 1 half times the Laplace of e to the 2t plus 1 half times the Laplace of 1. Um, so 1 half uh, Laplace of e to the 2t is 1 all over s minus 2. Laplace of 1 is just 1 over s. Okay, so they try to get tricky with you and some of these. I uh, have to use some trig identities on these other two. If the sine of 4t plus 5 may not be clear which trig identity, but that's the sin. Uh, it's going to be sin 4t cosine 5 plus sine 5 cosine of 4t. And then the Laplace of that thing these guys are just constants, so you could pull them out of the Laplace transform, and you end up with uh, cosine of 5 times the Laplace of sine of 4t, which is just going to be um, 2 all over s squared plus 4, and then plus sine 5, you could pull out a Laplace, and then the Laplace transform of cosine, cosine of 4t, which is s all over s squared, which it should be 16, not 4, and then this would be 4 up here, sorry. Um, so s squared uh, 
plus 16. Okay. So those are a little tricky. Anyways, we'll leave it there. Um, uh, I, just for the sake of completion, you don't have to watch this on this last part. This is just for me. What is the Laplace of cosine t? Okay. Um, so from the definition, it's the integral of e to the negative st times cosine of t dt, right? And this is one of those nasty ones, right? In order to figure it out, you got to do by parts, but it's going to loop on itself, right? So um, by parts, you know, it's u equals from Lee I do trig before exponential, negative sine t dt. And then dv is e to the negative st, and of course v would be e to the negative st over negative s. So multiplying it negative e to the negative st cosine t all over s, and then minus negative negative is positive, so positive integral of 1 all over s e to the negative st sine t. Okay. And then I have to, to do by parts on this guy, right? So by parts on that, u is now sine t, um, dv, e to the negative st, and then v again is negative e to the negative st over s, and then du would be cosine t, right? So I'd have uh, negative e to the negative st cosine t over s minus 1 over s times um, this times this is negative e to the negative st sine t all over s minus this times this will become plus 1 all over s integral of e to the negative st cosine t, which is where we started, dt. All right. So this integral here is basically just this integral right here. So we let each one of those equal i. So I'll have i then equals negative e to the negative st cosine t over s plus e to the negative st sine t all over s squared minus 1 all over s squared i. Okay, and these first two parts I have to evaluate as well. Um, move the 1 over s squared i to the other side, so get i uh, plus 1 over s squared i. And then on the right here, plugging in 0 to infinity. If you plug in infinity, um, these portions would go to 0, right? Um, then you could show by the, the uh, squeeze theorem, you know, because you'll have negative 1, less than or equal to 1, multiply through by this thing, you know the limit of that portion is 0, so if the limit of the outer parts is 0, then the limit of the inner part is 0, right? So you'd have this squeeze and then the outer parts are both going to go to 0 as t, as t goes to infinity. So uh, by the squeeze theorem, the inner part would go to zero. So both of these are going to kind of go to zero as you go to infinity. But then you still have to remember to plug in zero, right? So plugging in zero in the, the first part, I would get um, negative e to the zero times cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one. e to the zero is one. So let's just put one in the numerator all over s. And then, um, you know, plus this thing, the next thing evaluated at zero, but sine of zero is zero, so that would just be a big fat zero right there. Okay. Then on the uh, left side here, you have this expression. On the right, you'll just have one over s. Um, and, and then we can um, find a common denominator here on the left, so I'd have s squared squared plus 1 all over s squared times i equals 1 over s multiplied by reciprocals on both sides. I have 1 over s times s squared all over s squared plus 1. And of course, that would just be s all over s squared plus 1, which is what you'll see for the Laplace transform of cosine of 1t, right? 
I guess I should have done, put a K in there as well. This is just a cosine of T, but in general, if you have a K, then what's going to happen is the one will turn into a K squared. So the Laplace of cosine of KT is going to end up being um, S all over S squared plus K squared. And of course, the Laplace of sine of KT will work similarly, but not exactly. That'll be uh, K all over S squared plus K squared. So I just wanted to include that. Anyways, that's all there is. Um, thank you for watching as usual. I'll see you next time.